One of the issues to get this economy back on track and putting people back to work is testing. Let's invite into the program Quest Diagnostics uh, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Jay Wolgamuth, or as he's affectionately known by his friends, Dr. Jay. Good to have you here. When we talk about this testing, it's going to take time before all of us can just call you up and say, I want to test, right? Well, um, yeah, it's a it's a good uh, question. Uh, certainly, we have two types of testing that are relevant here. Uh, the first is the testing for the virus itself, uh, the PCR testing that we're familiar with. And uh, in that space, uh, we as an industry are much further along as we were a week or two ago in having very high uh, capacity and capability to do that. Um, we also, though, now have a serology or antibody-based testing available. And this is a testing to determine if someone's been exposed and recovered and potentially has some level of immunity. And that is also now broadly available um, through Quest Diagnostics and other uh, lab providers. And in fact, today we've made that available broadly to consumers also through a physician order on our Quest Direct uh, service. Jay, thanks so much. Um, what about the capacity? I know that one of the biggest issues right now has been capacity, and Quest has been one of those companies that has been really taking on the lion's share of the PCR testing. But now as we're getting into antibody, how do you plan to meet the demand? It's a great question. I, I, I would draw a distinction here between the uh, PCR and the serology, and there's two big factors. One, is that the sample type for the serology is a blood sample, the type of phlebotomy-based blood sample that we take every day uh, and also uh, is available through other laboratories. And that uh, can be drawn at any one of our 2,200 patient service centers around the country. Um, also, many of those now in retail partner sites like uh, Walmart or Safeway, uh, but also in physician offices, it can be drawn and at worksite events. So that creates a, a, a significantly easier a way to get this out or get people tested than the nasal swabs um, that we're used to. But also this type of testing scales very rapidly within Quest and very rapidly within other testing laboratories so that even this week alone or going into next week, we, we would have as much as 100,000 tests a day of capacity. And as you'll recall in the PCR, you know, working that up, it took, it, took a, quite a bit longer to get the volumes up to the level to meet demand. So we're pretty confident in this being scalable and widely available to, uh, to people as we uh, return to work. Uh, this is Julie here. I wanted to ask you more specifically about the antibody test. Uh, two questions. One, there have been some questions about its effectiveness or its accuracy, I should say. And two, there are also, of course, questions about whether if someone has the antibodies, they actually have immunity. How would you address those? And, and overall, then how useful are these antibody tests? Right, the, those are the two key questions. One is on accuracy, the other on what does it mean to have a positive result? And on the accuracy, I think the problem has been that there are over 90, um, I, I haven't counted today, but there were uh, over 90 applicants to the FDA uh, for ser serological testing devices. And many of those um, are uh, submitted with what we call an EUN, emergency use notification, which means that there's not a significant published validation data available for them. However, when we quest uh, make a test available in our laboratories, we took those 90, uh, we determined which had sufficient uh, validation data available to show that it was accurate. Uh, we then repeated those validation studies in our own laboratories and demonstrated for the tests we offer that we have high 99 plus percent specificity. And what that means is that when we call something a positive, it is highly likely that that's due to SARS-CoV-2 and not something else. So I think that's kind of on the accuracy front. Not all the tests are the same, and we've put these uh, the tests we offer through that uh, validation process. On the other question, it's it is complicated, uh, and no test is perfect, and we're going to learn a lot more. However, um, it is uh, it is clear that when we find someone who has a positive antibody test, 
and what we call an IgG antibody test to SARS-CoV-2, that that identifies a group uh, of people who are at significantly decreased risk um, for SARS-CoV-2 reinfection or primary infection. And we base this on lots of different data, including our experience with SARS and MERS and our understanding of how serology, um, you know, IgG responses work in general, but also the emerging data around what it means, you know, the immune response for SARS-CoV-2. Um, I would mention, you know, there's certainly different uh, opinions about the length of uh, that immunity and the, the um, strength of that immunity. Um, but the FDA did come forward a week ago, Friday, with a guidance to healthcare professionals um, that take a step forward to say IgG positive serology uh, means a highly likely prior infection and may be at reduced risk uh, for infection. So it's not perfect um, and there's a lot more to learn, but there's certainly value in knowing if a person has been infected previously. Uh, Jay, what about um, a direct, the direct-to-consumerism idea? I know that that's something that Quest is really big on. So how does this all play, number one, in uh, you know what else you're working on that would be able to reach the consumers directly rather than relying on uh, you know uh, doctors and physicians who have their practices closed right now? And secondly, how does this work within the payer structure? Do you have you know confirmation yet on whether or not insurers are covering these types of tests? Um, great questions. The uh, you know on the uh, reimbursement front with the PCR, uh, we went through a process that landed with broad uh, coverage across all uh, uh, health plans and uh, government payers, um, and we're going through that process in real time now with serology. We believe that um, it will be broadly covered by health plans, uh, but there's still some work to do there. Um, as far as access is concerned, we believe this is a great opportunity to use our Quest Direct channel, um, which is a service that allows people to, uh, as consumers, pay out of pocket and also access laboratory testing. But the important part of that to understand is that when that occurs for serology testing on Quest Direct, uh, we have a physician, uh, third-party physician group, vet the orders, place the orders, and then uh, be available for a telemedicine consultation uh, to the consumer and steer them into care. So what we Dr. don't do, you know, what we don't do, is make a serology test available to a consumer with no physician oversight. Dr. Jay Wolgamuth, you are the Quest Diagnostics Chief Medical Officer. A lot of us counting on that testing to get back to the office. Thank you so much. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.